I remember staying at my aunt and uncle's house once when I was a kid, bored out of my mind and flipping through channels on TV, when I stumbled across something new to me. It was a thing called wrestling, the WWF as it was known back then. I watched as oiled up muscle men pretended to fight each other, as other men in suits screamed from the sideline for only a few minutes before my aunt came in and, aghast at what she saw, turned off the TV and told me in no uncertain terms that we don't watch wrestling in this household. I can only imagine Imagine what her reaction would be today, seeing me play Kaiju Big Battle, a real-life wrestling performance group described as Godzilla meets the WWE. Yes, that's a real thing. Yes, somebody made a video game about it. And yes, I'm just as confused yet excited as you are. Kaiju Big Battle, yes it's spelled wrong on purpose, was created in 1994 by then university student Rand Borden. It was a film project he made for the School of Museum of Fine Arts Boston, and if the latex foam covered monster Borden called Midori no Kaiju isn't fine art, then I don't know what is. The film project never materialized, but Borden continued the concept, turning it into a weird mashup parody of wrestling and Japanese monster films, holding the first fight on Halloween night in 1996, featuring the Atomic Cannon, Power Ranjuru, Force Trooper Robo, and commentary provided by Taro the Mouth Fuji. Kaiju Big Battle Phyto Fantasy was brought to us by Super Walrus Games, a studio that seems tailor-made to make this game. Their previous works include Walthros, an old-school RPG where you play a fish, Horse Game, which really needs no introduction, and Sea Kane, a parody of the Games as Art movement wrapped up in another parody of Citizen Kane. This is, in a lot of ways, the quintessential indie game project, a weird niche independent fighting league making a game based on parodying RPGs by a small indie studio. That's, that's just the perfect pairing. Released in October 2018 on Steam and itch.io, Phyto Fantasy follows in the footsteps of Super Walrus's other games. It's an old-school JRPG modeled after Final Fantasy, as you probably guessed from the title. It's not much of a parody, though, instead featuring a somewhat serious plot and the typical gameplay mechanics you'd find in a traditional RPG. The plot is as odd as you'd expect, though. Some monsters showed up one day from places unknown and started destroying cities across the globe. A secret organization made up of rich and powerful people from across the world created the Kaiju Regulatory Commission and with it set up the Kaiju Big Battle, a fighting wrestling tournament specifically for monsters to fight each other and destroy fake cities and not the real ones. All goes well for a while until one of the members performs plastic surgery on himself in an effort to improve his looks. But it goes horribly wrong. So wrong that he somehow turns his head into a white cube. He blames the world for his failures and takes up the moniker Dr. Cube, and betrays the commission by summoning intergalactic space worms to destroy the world. It's a silly premise, but it works considering the absurdity that this game is based on to begin with. It more or less pays homage to the real Kaiju Big Battle League storytelling and features real characters from the act. Dr. Cube is the Vince McMahon main villain who runs things behind the scene. American Beetle is the meathead hero who pretends to be a Mexican wrestler for some reason. Dust Bunny, who's a dust bunny, and my favorite, Silver Potato, a giant potato wrapped in aluminum foil that never got to live his dreams of becoming a baked potato, but can use boiling water and microwave magic attacks. I don't know if you've realized it yet, but this game is silly. Did you pick up on that? It kind of reminds me of Chroma Squad with its kaiju, nerdy references, and cheap TV show production type setup. That might be part of the reason why I fell in love with this game so fast. The dialogue is suitably cheesy for what the game is, and while I wouldn't call it funny, it's not cringe-inducing either, certainly more on the pleasant side. If you go into this knowing that this is a parody of wrestling and Japanese monster movies, and you like that kind of thing, you know exactly what you're going to get in terms of characters and dialogue. Each character stands out with their unique personalities, which I enjoy far more than the tired tropes we usually see from the genre. Speaking of tired tropes, there's the gameplay itself. It's not bad by any stretch, don't get me wrong, but compared to the unique and inventive concept, story, and characters, this is where things kind of fall a little flat. This is a typical old-school RPG maker kind of RPG. You walk around the world in a top-down perspective, fight monsters in turn-based combat, talk to NPCs, and sometimes solve puzzles. It's weirdly unimaginative considering what the game is based on, but it does work. It's a 
solid, inoffensive RPG kind of game. I don't play that many of these kind of games, so I enjoyed it, but if you regularly play stuff like Omori, Fleeting Iris, Lisa the Painful RPG, stuff like that, you're gonna find the gameplay here rather bland. This is quite the substantial game though. An average playtime is about 12 hours, and there's a lot going on here. There's a hero HQ that acts as a hub world you can freely explore, many arcade games to play at HQ, and these actually have a purpose, as getting high scores on them will give you XP. There are multiple characters to add to your party, and you can swap them in and out as you need, an order system with those heroes that lets you access each character's unique ability, which will also let you explore new areas of each world, and a ton of varied levels, side quests, full character bios, and a music player. Kaiju Big Battle is worth checking out because it's such a unique piece of gaming history, in a way. How many other games can say they're based on real-life parody wrestling tournaments between a bunch of dudes in rubber suits and cardboard boxes pretending to be Japanese monsters and Mexican wrestlers? Not many, I don't think. It's a game worth playing because of its story, characters, unique world, and dialogue. Sure, the gameplay is a little stale, but it's a solid foundation for the rest of the game to flourish. There's a lot of game here too, plenty to keep you engaged like a child watching WWE for 10 minutes before your aunt turns off the TV and scolds you for reasons you don't understand even in your late 20s. That didn't make any sense, but I wanted to tie the end of this video back to the start somehow, so that's what you're getting.